to remember three key takeaways or coming to the last portion of the presentation. There are three key takeaways from this presentation, the things I started with. Don't just go with your gut. It's very tempting. It's very intuitive. It's what a lot of gurus will give you advice to do, go with your gut. That's why they're highly paid. <laughs> they give you advice that you're comfortable with. They don't give you advice that's actually necessarily true. They give you the advice that's comfortable. That's why they get paid. Watch out for dangerous judgment errors. We have over 100 of these dangerous judgment errors. The assessment goes into the 30 most dangerous judgment errors in, t in our institutions. There are many others that affect our everyday life, financial decision making, and so on. Integrate strategies to address dangerous judgment errors into your decision making, into your team and your organization. We talked about three strategies. Very easy five questions. Five questions, super easy. Any of your employees can do this. Give this out to your employees, any of them can do it. Then the assessment. That's something for you on an institutional basis to have your employees take as an educational and assessment tool. And finally, the pre-mortem strategy. That's more of a strategic tool for you to do with your leadership on a leadership level. I want you to invest in social intelligence for the sake of your HR success in higher educational settings. In the next 12 months, invest 25% of, resource, of resources devoted to professional development and process improvement to protecting yourself from these dangerous judgment errors. Something you learned about right now, it's something that's really helpful for you to protect yourself in the future. Now, you should be spending about 10% or so of your resources on professional development and process improvement. In time, you know, with, a, with, four, with two uh, weeks of, let's say you work 35 hours a week, two weeks of holidays a year, or of uh, vacation a year and all the holidays, that's about 1,700 hours a year. Then 170 hours per year should be vo devoted to professional development and process improvement, and 41 of those should be de devoted to protecting yourself from dangerous judgment errors. And the same thing with your money. So I know most higher ed institutions on average spend maybe about $2,000 on professional development per employee. So $500 of those should be spent on protecting themselves from dangerous judgment errors in the next 12 months. Now this was on the cutting edge. So this is something that is pioneering forward-looking HR professionals will benefit greatly from. And you are the ones whose initiatives will flourish. You'll have a lot of benefits for yourself if you do so, as well as for your team. You can focus on doing things that are going to cause you much less stress and anxiety. Now think about all the halo and horns effects, the empathy gap, the loss aversion, how much stress and anxiety those are causing you and people around you. And that's just four of all the major judgment errors that we as human beings tend to make because of our fight and flight response, because of our gut reactions. You can focus on the core of your HR activities. You have a ton of stuff to do. You don't need to spend your time firefighting, <laughs> solving problems in the moment. Addressing these dangerous judgment errors in advance will really help you focus on the future, focus on the core of your activities rather than firefighting. And it will help you exceed expectations for the administration, for the staff and the faculty, for the students, for the parents, and for the community around you because you will address problems in advance. And that's super important for your success. And I want you to be thinking about what's your story as you walk out of here. Do you want to think of yourself as the people hey, who, hey, I heard a paradigm shifting presentation, really went against a lot of advice, very strong stuff, going against gut reactions, going against intuitions, and I let it slip through the cracks despite what I wrote about in the beginning of the presentation. That's one story. You know, you can be that type of person. Or do you want to be a different type of person? Do you want to be the type of person who said, hey, I heard a paradigm shifting presentation, was on the cutting edge of research, person spoke to a number of our HR professionals, adapted to the content of what we specifically need in our HR practice, and I integrated this stuff. I took these strategies, I brought them home to my institution, and now we're starting to really take it to the next level, do much more with less, as all of you have to do unfortunately, but truly. So I want you to think about what kind of HR leader you're going to be as you walk out of this room. I believe that you're going to be the HR leader, the second HR leader who steps up and takes their institution to the next level. Thank you very much.